SEC is a tough league. I mean, that team's only won one game in the SEC, and you saw how tough it was to get a win. I, uh, you know, got to give a ton of credit to Mississippi State. They, they came ready to play. I thought they had a great plan. They improved more than we improved from the first time we played them. Uh, I didn't think we did a great job getting our guys ready to go. We didn't do a good job attacking them. Uh, we didn't we didn't start the game like we needed to, but I give our guys a lot of credit in the second half. They found a way to get a win in a tight game. We haven't had very many tight games, so it's not the worst that we had to figure out how to win a, a close game, especially when you're down. I, mean, I told our guys two years ago when we won the SEC championship, you know, in the tournament, in the semifinal, we're down 15 to Tennessee. you got to figure out how to win games that aren't going, going your way. I mean, we shot... 18% from three and couldn't buy a bucket and still figured out how to, how to beat a pretty good team. I mean, I know their record doesn't say they're good, but I, I still think they're a good team. I think they're going to upset some people. They play really hard. They, uh, they had, shoot, they had us down 10. So they, uh, or shoot, they had us down 11, I think, at one point. So it's a quality team, but we'll, at this point, we'll take a win. Yeah, you mentioned this is not the worst to have a close win. Um, what are the specific things you want your players to take away from a night like this that can help in the postseason? I mean, we, we told them, one, they got to be ready to go out of the gate. Like, you know, we chart blue collar points. They had us doubled up in the first two four minute wars. I didn't think we played hard enough. Mississippi State was playing harder than we were to start the game. So then when you're not playing hard enough, you're not getting stops on offense, you know, you, you start to struggle a little bit. I think when your defense is great, you kind of just lose yourself in the game. The offense is easier. You get some easier buckets in transition. So then it kind of compounded. I thought in the second half, we played a lot harder. The beginning of the half wasn't great on offense. We had, I think, four turnovers in the first four minutes. So, But I thought we were playing harder. And then eventually, we played hard enough, got enough stops, got out in transition, hit a few transition buckets, got some, got some easier looks. The offense started flowing a little bit more, but I mean, it was not a great uh, offensive game by any stretch uh, for us tonight. How big was JQ tonight on offense to kind of get the offense going late in the second half on that run, whether it's facilitating the ball or scoring himself? Yeah, he was huge. I mean, like, you know, he can shoot, so, a, um, you know, they couldn't really sag him as much, you know, and they tried to switch. I thought he's got some. Explosiveness to get in the paint, make plays happen. You know, he hit the one three. He hit, hit some drives going in. He made his free throws for the most part. I think he made, missed the one late, but he's five or six at the line. So, you know, he had four assists and only one turnover. I think you're starting to see he ended up leading us in scoring tonight. You know, on a, on a night when we needed some scoring help, they did a great job on Brandon and Sears. You know, we needed somebody to step up and score the ball, and JQ's been able to score for us pretty well in the past. Uh, we needed him tonight. So, you know, we need everybody. I, Pringle stepped. I thought Pringle played well. I maybe should have got him a few more minutes, but, you know, he scored seven points in eight minutes. He was three for three at the line. Those, his free throws were big. This is a guy that struggled in the past. He's worked hard to correct his free throws, and we needed every last one of them tonight. So, there's a couple guys that maybe hadn't played as big a role as we needed. Noah Gurley, I thought, gave us big minutes late in the game and closed the game for us. So, we got, got – it's the thing about this team is we're deeper. We got some depth. We can use it, you know, when we need to. And we had some guys step up tonight. Yeah, you just kind of got into that a little bit, but you went to the bench pretty early. You know, Brandon was out of the game in the first four minutes. Just what were you looking for, you know, from the bench at that point? And also, what did you get from Dom Welch, uh, two for three? Yeah, it was great to see uh, some shots drop for Dom. That one at the end of the half was big. Cut it from ten to seven. You know, we know he's a shooter. He's been practicing really hard and trying to get him some minutes. Uh, you know, I the the Brandon. I, I didn't really take him out for doing anything wrong, particularly. It's just, you know, there were I think there was sixteen forty, if I remember right, to to go. We were coming down on defense. He just picked up a foul. I figured I got him right back in at the media. I just figured we could save him a possession or two on defense. Try not to get him in foul trouble. I know we're going to need him. You know, might have been good because he ended up with three fouls. He picked up a couple unnecessary ones there in the second half. He tends to do that occasionally. So. That Brandon's deal was just trying to foul trouble. And then I thought offensively, 
I think did I sub JQ in for Bradley maybe too? I, I thought JQ could maybe get us going a little bit. They'd have to guard him a little bit closer out there. He's a little bit better shooter. They seem to be helping off Jaden a lot, sagging him. He Jaden did do a good job. I thought bringing in a second half, maybe attacking a little better, but you know it was a little harder with the way they were guarding Jaden to get us going a little bit. Uh, Coach, how would you assess the uh, defensive performance from the first half to the second half and the improvements that were made there? Look, our energy, our energy got better. I mean, played harder. You know, got some steals, made some deflections. You know, our points off turnovers. This is a team that needs to score off turnovers in Mississippi State. They had nine off turnovers. We had 22. I, I think a lot of those came in the second half. So I. I think it was a deal where our guys realized, you know, we're down seven, and I think we got down ten again in the second half. Like, this isn't an easy game. We got to pick our energy up now. It's disappointing that we had to pick it up. It should just be there from the beginning, but we picked it up. We figured out a way to get a win, and, you know, if you're going to win an SC championship, you got to win some games that you don't play your best, and we figured out a way to get a win. Our, really, our defense in the second half, I think, was what did it. You, you talked about it at the end there, but you know you said the team needed to pick it up in the second half. Is there anything that you said in the locker room to, to kind of inspire the team to play a little bit harder, or was there anything that was said during that time? I mean, we just pointed out all the defensive screw-ups they had. I mean, the, the numbers were down in the blue-collar stats. We were down on the glass. Just based – I mean, we didn't – there was nothing profound. We just said we got to play harder. Like, this, we told you at the beginning, told you coming in, this is a hard-playing team. You know, if you don't play our them, the team that can beat you. Shoot, we're down seven. You know, we could have easily been down ten if Dom didn't hit that three at the end of the half. But I thought our guys did play harder in the second half. So it was not. There was no. There was no real major adjustments. To be honest with you, we. You know, I thought offensively we did a little bit better job. Although we had four turnovers in the first four minutes of the second half, so it didn't look like we did much better. But I, I, I thought we were able to score off our defense a little bit. We did a little bit better job with some of the switch attacks in the second half, too. So. What's the, I guess, as the vibe at halftime? Is it, is it you? Or is, is it more of a butt chewing? Or is it you let some of the players kind of speak for themselves? You got some veterans. Uh, like honestly, JQ. like, I, I usually the staff goes, meets for three or four minutes, come in. This, we, we went right in and just started checking off all everything that was wrong. Like, there was so much wrong with that we just had the whole list we just and it wasn't I mean we were definitely a little animated with some of the screw-ups and why they did it but it wasn't I, it wasn't necessarily about you and I think this team's a pretty mature group that knew they weren't playing as hard and as well as they needed to and if we're gonna win we gotta fix this I mean we screwed up switches we screwed up some coverages we didn't talk through some stuff we offensively some of our turnovers were not good turnovers, so there was just there's plenty of stuff fixed. We went through it, told them go out and get yourself good warm up. We got, we got to be ready to go, and I think you saw them at, at the, kind of the end of the half. They had a little longer meeting there. I think that's when they got together and we, we got picked this thing up. So we got pretty good leadership within the, within the team. Hey, coach, uh, going into this one, number two team in the country. Everybody in the conference wants to knock you guys off. How do you think your team is handling the growing target on its back? Uh, based on tonight, it didn't look good. I uh, didn't. That was the worst game we'd played in a while. So, I, I personally thought we'd been handling it pretty well coming up till tonight. So, you know, we've also had a lot on our plates the last week and a half. You know, I, I don't know. If, you know, I thought we did well at Vandy. We did pretty good at Missouri. Maybe some of that's catching up. I don't know. But we, we, I, I don't think this is a group that's going to let too much of that get to their head. To me. Listening to them talk, talking to them one on one, like I think they all understand. There's plenty of room to get better, and we gotta get better. This is, you know, I don't, I don't know what the deal was tonight. Based on tonight's play, it looks like we're not handling it well. But I don't, I honestly don't think that's the case within the group. I, I think we'll bounce back. Hopefully, we can learn off a win. You know, a mature group can come in after a win and learn just as much as they can after a loss. So. You know, we didn't play as well as we need to. Hopefully, we learn the lessons we need to after a win and, and get a little bit better on Saturday. Coach, I wanted to, when you win games like this, you got to show a lot of grit. I thought a couple of the key sequences, Noah Gurley got a big O board and also with a big assist to the sent Clowney to the line for two. 
talk about his contribution tonight. And then also, you guys' first lead of the game was Ryland's three from the corner. He also had a little uh, floater in the lane. He, I thought he played pretty fearless. But just talk about those two guys off the bench. Yeah, Rylan uh, has no fear. He's a super confident kid. He prepares himself to play well. He's been shooting the ball really well in practice. He shot at well at Missouri. We expect those to go in. You know, and I, he, he's a good player. He's going to be really good for us uh, when we need him to be this year and down the road. And then I thought Gurley was great. Yeah, the assist he had to Clowney. Clowney did a great job at the free throw line tonight, going seven of eight. You know, he's worked hard to get that fixed like Pringle has. But Gur Gurley got the old board. I mean, he made a couple big plays. I thought is the defense he had, was it – was it – I can't remember who he's on, which guard it was on. It was either Moore or Reed, if I remember right. I thought it was really good for like 10 seconds, and he just reached in at the end. And But I thought you could tell he was ready to go, moving his feet, sitting down guard. And so we need some veteran guys that maybe aren't playing huge, huge minutes. Just come in. I thought Dom and, Dom and Gurley both did that for us tonight, in my opinion. Two questions. The first one, going back to – depth with about 10 minutes left in the first half you're down 18 to 9 and you subbed in your 10th and 11th player that had played to that point um looking for a spark for as far on the bench as you need to at that point or does it just speak to how confident you are in those guys yeah i which two guys were though i don't remember which two uh, I played. the Was last it? two were burnett and pringle yeah so burnett's obviously been a starter for us so i definitely have some confidence in him i thought he's a great kid i thought he was a little antsy to make a play gambled on defense and then i kind of punched it to him you know he gave up two buckets uh, or, but I, I i we've got a lot of confidence in him he just he's got to get some game reps you know hopefully we can get some separation from some teams and he can get back in game mode and then Pringle played well against these guys last time and he's been playing well in practice I mean a lot of that with some of those guys that don't play heavy minutes how well are you practicing I thought Pringle's been really good in practice I thought he got himself ready to go he played pretty good against these guys last time Charles wasn't playing great I thought Clowney was struggling a little bit and you know let's go with Pringle and see what he does I thought he gave us pretty good minutes there in the first half and the second question uh Quinterly took two mid-range jumpers does that hurt him on hard hat points we don't take away points on mid-range. The one got blocked, so obviously that wasn't a good one. The one he made, I thought that that was a good shot, to be honest with you. So, you know, if they're open and the bigs just drop back, like, he's a good shooter. Go ahead and pull up and shoot them. Let's not shoot the ones that get blocked. Though. Those probably aren't good shots. They get blocked. If, as a coach, nobody wants to go 5 of 28, get down 11. But – for a team that kind of made things look so easy, I mean, as a coach, do you kind of like relish to some extent a game like this? Yeah, I mean, not happy with the effort for 40 minutes, not happy with a lot of things in the game. But as a staff, sometimes you got to learn how to win a tight game. And you can't generate that in practice. I and mean, we've been doing end of game situations knowing that we're, I've told the guys, like, we're going to have to execute some late game stuff. We're not going to be able to blow everybody out by 20 plus points. It's not the way it works, you know, in SEC play. So we've been working on it in practice. There's no way to emulate real game situations, though. So I thought we did a good job being down 10 in the second half, coming back, getting the lead we got. Didn't think we did a great job closing it. I mean, it was eight point lead with three minutes or so to go, and it ends up only being three. I thought we could have done a better job with some of that late game stuff, even the last minute, to be honest with you. But it's good to be put in those situations, figure out how to get a win. We did get some decent stops. You know, they, they scored a couple, but we'll, we'll learn from it, hopefully be better, because it's not going to be the last close game we have for sure.